Hello friends. This map is one of the most influential maps of Florida ever made, although not necessarily for the right reasons. Drawn in 1591 by Jacques Lemoyne, the map was created using information provided from the expedition of Rennes Laudonniere to Florida in 1564. Jacques Lemoyne was an artist who accompanied René Laudonniere to Florida in 1564. Lemoyne prepared this map along with drawings and a narrative account of their journey. Fellow mapmaker of the era Theodore de Bry first attempted to obtain information of the expedition along with the drawings of the region from Lemoyne in London in 1587. But Lemoyne, who was then working for Sir Walter Raleigh, refused to part with it. After Lemoyne's death in 1588, de Bry acquired his work from Lemoyne's widow and published them in 1591. It is suggested that the manuscript map he acquired was the source of not only this map, but was also used by John White in making the southern part of his La Virginia Pass map of 1585, also known as the map of the Lost City of Roanoke. This map was a landmark for the region, containing significant new information, even though often inaccurate, that became a primary source for other maps for the next 150 years. It was Lemoyne's misfortune to have many of his errors incorporated and even exaggerated in Mercator's map of 1606, upon which, for a half of a century, much of all future cartography of the region was based. Lemoyne's coastline is usually correct for latitude, but the shore extends too far east rather than northeast in direction. This caused a striking error in Mercator's map with a compensating enlargement of the Virginia region. The mistake was corrected somewhat by Janssen in 1641 and those who followed him, but for well over 50 years, nearly every map produced based on the one by Lemoyne ended up with the same errors. The sea shown at the top is probably Verrazano Sea. A similar body of water is found in Lescarbot's map of 1611 and Seller's map of 1679. Along the coast are Latin names for rivers and bays such as Gironda, Garumna and Charenta together with a few of the earlier Spanish names. While scholars have attempted to identify the rivers shown, Cumming questioned whether Lemoyne had definite knowledge of the number of rivers along the coast. The names were given on the first voyage under Ribau, who in his account makes some reference to their latitude and appearance. They were eventually superseded by others when the 17th century English settlers arrived and only Lemoyne's Portus Regalis or Port Royal survives. Lemoyne's placement of Charlefort on an island at Port Royal in Carolina or the Fort La Carolina on the River May are helpful identifications, but the name Carolina was copied by a later mapmaker as well as by Nicholas Sanson, 1656, and on those maps the city was put much farther north. This was probably the original source of the later false belief of mapmakers of the time, and even 19th century historians that the whole country was named Carolina by the French. Lemoyne added several lakes which endured in mythological proportions in the later cartography of the southeast. In the peninsula of Florida is a lake with an island called Sarup, which probably represents Lake Okeechobee. North of Sarup is a larger lake, which over time became the great inland lake of the southeast. Lemoyne locates it slightly southeast of the mouth of the May River, which is now called the St. John's River, and that is where its waters flowed into. He calls it Lacus Aquae Dulces, or Freshwater Lake, and says that it is so large that from one bank it is impossible to see the other side. To the north of the lake, among the Montes Apalachi, or Appalachian Mountains, is another large lake fed by an enormous waterfall. Below this lake is written in Latin, in this lake the natives find grains of silver. This waterfall 
may have been inspired by tales of waterfalls in western North Carolina, but it is more likely to depict the legends heard from Indians of the Great Falls of Niagara. As you can see from the variations on screen, Jacques Lemoyne's map was copied many times throughout the late 1500s and well into the next century. All copies were hand-drawn and usually coloured, although there are a few uncoloured versions known to exist. It's unknown how many copies were drawn and distributed, and how many still exist today, but Jacques Lemoyne's map of Florida and the southeastern portion of what would later become the United States, even with its errors, became one of the most influential and most important maps of the 16th century. If you would like to learn more about the incredible world of ancient cartography, be sure you're subscribed so you get notified of new videos when they're released. As always, I look forward to sharing more great maps with you in the future and I thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.